All right, let's keep going in our little ladder challenge. Right now on the left table, we are still on NL50, but grinded our stack up to $92. So just $8 missing to reach NL100. And on the right side, we are really good on track, having $190 playing on NL100. So we just need another $10 to finally move up to NL200. So that's the goal for this part of the session. Maybe we can get that done quickly and then play like for like moving up further in the challenge. Goal would be better best case to end up playing Zoom 500 and double there to have a $1,000 stack that we started in NL50. And if NL500 is not running as so often, I'll try to reach a $500 stack on NL200. So let's continue with those two tables and hope for the best. Actually, there's a, we had that one flip on the right side that was quite exciting. And we have a limper and we play pocket jacks here. So this is a really good start. Lots of hope to get those $10 in here right now. Actually hope to not get a three bet here, like pocket jacks against someone like three betting large here in that spot now is not great at all. 180 big steep, we are obviously not folding. He has all the ace kings in the range. Like ace queen people start flatting actually quite often to keep it in there because they are not like so big. Hit. Okay, so actually this is a really bad start probably. I was mainly playing against ace king. I don't think that, like, I mean, tens, nines can do that as well. Just like this spot where it's like a limper, iso and a three bet is way more like a cold four bet spot than it's like a three bet spot. And in a cold four bet spot, we wouldn't feel great with jacks at all. So he checks now that's like pocket kings pocket queens or pocket aces in a way some weak ace x ace five suited maybe but i'm not turning my jacks into a bluff so maybe there's still pocket tens is a chance uh left side yeah right side i'm not doing anything like i'm not expect like yes he can have like five six of spades now but i think he just has it and uh, left side i'm just trying to sneak sneak away a bluff against nines and eights and he has like jack 10 like something i was just looking at the board what is likely that he checks it back here and so yeah we drop down to 175 bigs on the right side with those pocket jacks instead of getting to nl 200 but i'll keep working so queen jack offsuit clear defend here against the cutoff it's half pot and easy fold against a small bet. We might have like some float ideas there. Ace queen suited, I will definitely three bet. I see this guy around on all the tables already as well. So against the mid stack, because he can jam pretty much all kinds of stuff, we'll decrease our cold four bet sizing. But ace queen suited will still be in there. King queen offsuit is a fold against the big mind three bet. What the fuck is happening here? We get that cold call. And this is an interesting board. Now ready to stack it off. Like is pocket tens cold calling here for 160 bigs in a spot where this guy can always jam. Like if he has ace king, the money is in the middle. Like they are both not donkey. This can be some ace king as well. So I try to maybe move that out. I'm happy to stack off against him. I definitely want to bet this hand. He's just in such a horrible sandwich position. And now oh, what could he have? What the fuck? But yeah, I think I just need to keep barreling. Like checking doesn't help me now, right? Then if the river is not a club, I have the same decision for one bet. I'm not expecting too many check jams or raises or whatsoever now. A check jam would be so insane. And now it's just a check check on the river. I don't know what this guy's up to. Is that some pocket kings? I don't know. Some trapped aces that were hoping for that jam. I just think I don't have any value anymore. Sure, he can have pocket jacks. I think that's his most likely hand, but you're not really calling. And I check this down, hope to win against jacks. Seven, eight of clubs. This is just, whew, this is kind of ridiculous. to just cold call pre there. But okay, we got the $230 and I should take away his yellow tag here. Perfect, right? Oops, I timed out even better. I mean, I wanted to time out actually. No, I want to go sit out next big blind. And this time we keep in mind $30.93 that we are allowed to reload an L200. Yeah, that went well. So $230.93, I write that down on the side somewhere. This is pretty cool. So over batting there on the left after putting out a small bet there out of position as the aggressor. Now he should not have too much ace king. So we are really going for it. And I wanted to write down a note here for the right side, $30.93 in the bank to re reload. Perfect. Okay. So we leave that table with $230.93 on L100 and take that money to work on L200. Play now, no auto rebuy, one table, put it on the right side, show the money. Here we go. All right. So now left table, still NL50, but on the edge to NL100. And now on the right side, we face some no names here, like the mayor and my name is Carl. So we have like better competition, definitely. And we're playing for more money and we are on a good way with our challenge. Let's say on a good way. Checking that again. Check, check, queen, jack, deuce is interesting. So I like tens, nines, jack, x probably. So I try to like 
This is something I would bluff. This is something I can value bet. Whatever he does, I don't care. I'm just always winning, I want to say, but okay, he has the one better hand. That's okay. Ace King suited, nice one though. Yeah, I've seen that guy quite often before now. So on L200, not trying to splash it up too much here. So six, seven suited is pretty much never a three bet from the small blind against the button. So I'm just not doing it. Stopping to take post flop edge as like an excuse for every light play. And actually we have something to lose now, right? We are in like the third step already of our ladder. We don't want to drop down to the second. So let's play like kind of normal. Seven, four suited. Pocket seven, sometimes a three bet, mainly not. But here we are going crazy. Still on L50. I mean, we are on the edge to NL100, but gives us a good shot. Seeing a flop, taking it down with a C-bet. And absolutely fine. Ace 5 3. I think we can put out a C bet here. It's a board you can check a lot. Rainbow makes it better to C bet. It's tough for a villain to navigate with all his suited broadways. And Queen 4 suited is just a fold. We have some backdoors at least with that 7s. Ooh. Now well, that's interesting. Villain shouldn't have pocket deuces really too often. So now we can attack pocket 8s, 9s, 10s, jacks with this sizing here, actually. I could play Ace King, Ace Queen the same way. I still get called by 5 6 and pocket 6s. Ooh, block six, seven suited, <laughs> pocket sixes. Am I just running into pocket sixes here? I can play sixes the same way. So this would be my best bluff actually, if I want to bluff ever and my bluff size should be all in. I'm not folding with this hand. So I think I just jam it myself and yeah, hope to get a crying fold of like some ace queen type of hands. If he has sixes, he has sixes, then we hate our life. Oh, ace nine, okay. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Interesting hand, definitely. Ace queen just going for an easy range bet. Pocket eights, 2.5 to 12 big blinds, definitely calling here. Sucks a little that I don't have the full stack. Any note, okay, on the tighter side. Hit, ooh, so close. It looked, the hearts made me feel like it's a set. Both the five and the nine, it's like three quarters of an eight somehow here. Damn it. The left side, definitely calling that check raise. Mm -hmm. And here against that large C bet against someone who likely is too tight, my hand should be indifferent right away. I slightly prefer sixes and sevens with a double backdoor straight. I don't have hearts. I think my hand is just a good fold. And ace queen of hearts, I think I'm just going for that small bet. I can get a check call by hands that I actually beat, like an ace high flush draw. And I fold out something like seven eight that has solid equity against me. And we make the hundred dollars. And actually on the right side, I can just reload my thirty dollars ninety three that we earned before. And a 100 before moving here. We killed that and play this hand here. We need to make sure to stay above the 100. So we call once here and then probably fold. 7 3 suited. Let's bump it up. Check, check. And we win. All right. So left tail. Let's see. We go sit out next big blind. And I remember again what we still have in the bank left when moving up. So from starting both tables in NL50 and only being allowed to move up when we doubled our stack or like reach the certain number, we made it all the way up to NL100 on the left side and NL200 on the right side just with starting stacks there now. But we have some work to be done. Doubling up can happen any hand. Jack 10 off is fold. King 3 off is fold. Let's fold this one. And there we take left table $3.25 in the bank for a 100 obviously. All right, so left table and a 100. And here now we got to defend our stack of $200. Let's freaking go. Let's make some hands or play some shorter stacks poker. That's totally fine. This is a fold though. Pocket jacks and a 100. Let's see. Obviously happy to get it in against Mr. Dr. House with his 53 big blinds. Open raising to 3x there from the button. Now a 3 bet and then me cold 4 betting would be a little closer. My 3 bet to actually I could make smaller because he is a little short. And now we are using a two street strategy to just get it in against other pockets. Like if he has a queen, he has a queen. So I'm not thinking about that. And in my mind, the board right now is just a 9, obviously. So I play on a board that just has a 9. So my jacks are the nuts. Right now, I don't like lots of turn cards. And now we're putting it in the middle. If he has a queen, he has a queen. If not, we're potentially or most likely winning. So let's go. Sevens, here we go. All right, very important to get it in before there's the jack of diamonds on the river and then we have something left and he won't call. So very nice start on that table there on the left side. While, oh, this is interesting now. L200, we need to fight back here a little. Small bet, queen six suited, mainly a check raise, not always though. I'm blocking the queen that calls me. I'm not scared of any turn card, really. Like a king gives him new two pairs, right? But like not straights or anything. And if there's a three, four, seven, eight straight cards potential also. Actually, I'm going to check call here only. And this is an okay card, like the seven, eight suited. He only has it suited. That's the big plus here. And he over bets even. I block sixes, so he can have fives, nines. He has like all the king jack type of fans. Left side, I'm obviously calling. 
after calling the 3-bat. And I'm just raising here double flush draw. I'm thinking about against the overbat, I might need to just check jam. Or is this too weak? He can have queen nine suited one combination, not really. I'm just jamming. Let's be greedy. Let's be greedy. Oh no, that just doesn't make sense. 10 here. I'm not bluffing that ace queen here. I might be drawing dead. So let's realize equity first. Okay, he calls. Just thinking about which hands to check call, but I think this here is just a he should just jam nines himself. 7-8 is just slow playing. I'm running into that. That's okay. Good luck. No snap. We need the tank. And now we should be good. 5-6. Here we go. Freaking kind of cooler. Take it. 366 dollars. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel and stay always up to date, then leave a subscribe here or check out our next video.